He's got a Republican part of that group of uh, senators, 10 in all, five Republicans, five Democrats, trying to cobble something together. Senator Cassie, good to see you. Making any progress? We are making progress, Neil. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, uh, we continue to work hard, worked all day yesterday, all through the weekend. There are some thorny issues, but we can get it done. And the infrastructure bill, as your guy pointed out, is not the Bernie bill, not the kind of reckless spending and taxation that the Democrats want to do. This is about roads, bridges, and highways. I think it'll be good for our country. I think we can get it done. You know, um, when you and fellow Republicans succeeded in, in dropping this IRS $100 billion provision to beef up enforcement to pay for a lot of this, Democrats are left scrambling with coming up with an alternative way to pay for it. But I, I, I know there's a back and forth on this. But is this thing even close to paid for? Yeah, it may not be like paid for the way CBO scores, but a reasonable person will look at it and say, yeah, that's right. For example, lots of states have decided to end the federal unemployment um, additional payment early. That's about $50 billion that's not being spent. We're going to to apply that to this infrastructure package. Uh, that's real money that's not being spent, that's been allocated for COVID response. CBO may not give us credit, but it's real money that's not being spent that's already been allocated. And so if you look at it in a common sense way, you're gonna say, yeah, they paid for it. And so we uh, feel good about that. Because again, the infrastructure, we need it. It's good for our country. And I think it'll pay for itself in addition to the way that we're paying for it. Senator, maybe you could help me with how Congress does things in general in the Senate and the House, because no matter what you do in the Senate, even if you do come up with a bipartisan plan accepted to everyone, I get the sense from Nancy Pelosi, she won't even consider it if that backup, it's hardly a backup measure to her, that three and a half trillion dollar so-called human infrastructure plan isn't also wrapped up. Um, the devil's in the details and the sequence of voting, I get that, but she could stop all the progress you're making by not even considering it when it gets to the House, if it gets to the House. So, Neil, unpack what she's saying. She's saying that she doesn't think she has the votes to pass the Bernie bill, I call it, the tax and spend extravaganza, because there's bipartisan opposition. That's what she's saying. And she's going to attempt to coerce people into voting for it uh, by holding hostage something that the American people want that's good for American jobs, economy, our future. Now, by the way, we're heading into an election year. If she wants to kill a really good bill, great for the economy, creating millions of jobs, to hold it hostage for the Bernie bill, uh, uh, she'll take her chances in the next election cycle, because I promise you, voters will punish that decision. I think she doesn't have the votes for the tax and spend extravaganza. She's holding this hostage, but ultimately, she's going to have to have a vote on it. But doesn't this violate the president's commitment to you guys on this bipartisan original infrastructure only package that there would be no linkage? And, and it appears to be, at least in her eyes, very much linkage. Absolutely, it violates it. So we just have to figure that the president's going to push it. The president's political fortunes rise and fall on getting something. If, if she's going to say, if I don't get everything I want, you're not getting infrastructure. The president will bear the political price. He knows that. His team knows that. Believe me, there will be a lot of pressure both from the voters, her members, and from the White House for Pelosi to take up our bill. Can't predict the future, but you can certainly see the way the future lines up. You know, you're talking about politics, Senator. Um, I, I don't think I can ever remember a time where the two parties have been so diametrically opposed on the same thing. That is this latest spending package. Democrats are banking on that, helping them in the, for the midterms and beyond, because they say every American will be benefiting, things will be booming even more than they are now. Republicans counter. All those gains are wiped out with the higher price you pay, the inflation for everything from grocery uh, prices to washers and dryers and you name it. Um, someone's got to be wrong here. I'm, I'm sure you don't think it's Republicans, but do you think or do you fear as a Republican the Democrats might have something that will show a short-term economic gain um, with the inflation pain to come later? For a couple of things, the American people will have a choice. Uh, Republicans cut taxes, let people make their own choices on investment and spending, and our economy took off. 
with record levels of employment for everybody and wage growth disproportionately in those who are lower income. COVID hit, messed it up, okay? But prior to that, we had low inflation, high stock market, record low unemployment. Democrats have taken over. Now we're getting record employment. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, record inflation and wage growth disproportionately in those who are better off. And they're going to give record taxes. The American people have a choice between two visions. I'm pretty confident they're going to like ours. Even before you begin to talk about a border uh, between us and Mexico totally out of control and other ways that this administration is mismanaging.